Hey guys. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the Whisper of the Worm. It's getting vaulted in about two weeks, so we don't have much time, so let's get right into it. First, we're going to go over the loadout I used, some recommendations there, and then also some recommendations on the combat encounters and how you should go about completing those. Again, you've only got 20 minutes and maybe a third of the firepower you're used to, so you're going to need to move fast. Before that, I'd like to say just a few quick words. First, you're going to want to practice. You are definitely going to fail. I failed the first few times. Weird stuff happens. Practicing a little bit is also really beneficial because it kind of takes some of the stress off. Practicing helps you identify where you struggle, what areas slow you down, and it can also help you refine your loadout. Like I said, we're about to get into my loadout, but it's really not definitive. I, I like it, but you may like other things because your playstyle might be totally different. I tend to be a little bit more aggressive, so going with high damage, fast output is really good for me, but you may find something else works better for you. Although I will say the combat encounters are pretty close quarters and you're going to have enemies all over. So yeah, practice. Expect to fail maybe a little bit, but you'll get it in no time. Now, if you haven't played this mission, I would totally recommend just stopping this video right now and going to play it, because it's really cool to just experience without knowing what's going on ahead of time. Before I move on, I will have time codes posted below, as well as a full run without any commentary. Alright, so moving into loadout. For my primary slot, I used Wither Horde, which is really helpful for maintaining damage on the bosses at the end, or just throwing one at the ground to keep enemies off you like the Thrall in the first and second rooms. I really liked it best for the bosses though, like I said, especially if you have the catalyst with auto loading holster, that's huge, rotating the direct hit blights with the ground blights. Moving on to my energy slot, I used the recluse. Now seeing as this channel is called the scrub hub, I kind of wanted to avoid using the really top tier weapons like mountaintop or recluse, that kind of thing. But to be honest, I didn't have a lot of time to get this video out and the mission is going away pretty soon, so I just wanted to get it out there. The reason I really liked the Recluse for this was because the Acolytes all have Void Shields and you want something highly accessible like your primary that can really chew through those shields. The damage buff is also super helpful whether you're getting kills with your sword, which we'll discuss in a minute, or with Wither Horde, having Master of Arms proc all the time is really helpful. You probably want to use Falling Guillotine for your heavy. It hasn't been nerfed yet. I know it's coming but it does a ton of damage and it's really helpful when you're running low on time for taking out majors or the bosses at the end. For my subclass, I use Top Tree Night Stalker. Combined with Sixth Coyote or whatever it's called, uh, the one that gives you two dodges is really helpful because the invisibility helps keep you alive a lot longer. Since my playstyle is a little more aggressive, I thought the invisibility was really helpful for getting me out of bad situations, which I got myself into a fair amount. The longer lasting tether is also really helpful for larger groups of enemies. It also has an extended reach, so that helps too. So I would usually use my super in the first room and then have it back by the time I got to the bosses at the end. Throw your tether down, go in with Fallen Guillotine, get a few hits, use your invisibility, get out of there. It works pretty nicely. If you're not playing Hunter, I would recommend something like Top Tree Titan for the bubble. That can be really helpful provides a safe zone for you and also a huge damage buff. If you just drop one of those on the final bosses, you'll probably be able to toast them before they can do anything. For Warlocks, I would probably also recommend Top Tree Voidwalker. The Nova Bomb for that subclass does a lot of damage, which again is very important for taking out bosses at the end when you're cutting it close on time. Now as far as the combat encounters go, don't take out all the blights necessarily because those provide really valuable cover actually. You want to pick and choose the ones that you take out carefully so that way you don't expose yourself to unnecessary fire. Now before I move into some of the strategy for these encounters, I should give a little disclaimer. I actually don't even follow all of my own advice. You can actually see in the video that I don't even follow the path that I discuss every time. Part of the reason is because I did this mission a lot, I kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit. There are so many ways to do these rooms that there's hardly a best way, but some of the methods I'm discussing here are what I found to work pretty well. In general, I tried to use the same principles. Get in and take out the majors quickly, don't be afraid to use heavy ammo, rotate your wither horde, that kind of thing. For the very first room, I would recommend just taking out all the thrall that charge you and then maybe moving on to the vandal on the right. That sniper can be really pesky when you're trying to take out the captains. 
after you kill that Vandal, I would usually use my super on the captain there and the Vex because it prevents them from shielding the captain so much. Use your sword, use the heavy attack, take them all out, then move on to the captain on the left side. For the second room, I would recommend leaving most of the Blights alone, especially that one right as you come in. Kill the Knight on the right as well as the Acolytes. A big part of succeeding in this mission is kind of creating like safe pockets for yourself. It's almost like the Prophecy Dungeon with the three bosses at the end. You need to take out one of them as fast as you can so you have at least one safe spot. I'd say the same principle applies here, where you just want to clear a spot as fast as you can so at least you have a place that you can recover or hunker down for a moment and then get back to it. Okay, so after you kill that knight there on the right, once you've recovered a little bit, push up and kill the wizard, because he's really annoying with all the thrall that he summons, so kill the wizard, and then jump up and kill the knight right there, and then I'd recommend moving on to the hobgoblins right away. Once you clear them out, the room becomes pretty easy, and you can just clean up the rest. Alright, so before you jump down into the boss room, you've got that last little triangular room with the scions on the right, hobgoblins on the left, and then the phalanxes that spawn behind you, don't forget that. You just walk towards the edge, come back, they'll spawn, you can take them out, and then move on to the hobgoblins and then the scions. Alright, so you're finally at the boss room. Take out that first wave of adds, no problem, and then spawn the bosses. Again, Wither Horde is really nice here because you don't have to be out in their sight lines getting shot at while still giving them damage. Depending on how much time you have, it's totally fine to just like go out and tag the boss with a blight while shooting adds. It's helpful to take out a lot of the adds, but sometimes they're just in a blight though anyways and they're not able to shoot you while you're attacking the boss. When I've cleared out enough guys, this is when I usually go for damage on the boss. Tag it with Wither Horde, run in, throw your oppressive darkness grenade on it, do a heavy attack with falling guillotine, maybe back off and chuck a blight at the ground, go in for a couple more swings, and then get out of there. You're not really going to be able to survive more than two boss stomps, so just make sure you don't get too greedy. Get your damage in, get out of there. It's way more costly if you die, because it's five seconds to respawn, and then who knows how long to get back there. The spawn points in this mission are a little weird. The very first time I tried this mission, actually, it sent me to the very beginning after I died to one of the bosses, so I don't really know why that happened, but if you can minimize how much you die, it's less likely you'll get bugged out. So again, use the blights to your advantage, and choose when to do damage to the bosses carefully. You don't really want to run out there when you still have a ton of adds shooting at you. The Centurions are especially annoying with their little tracking projectiles, so just make sure you give yourself some breathing room before you go do boss damage. It gets a lot easier once you kill one of the bosses too. I would probably recommend taking out the Fallen Captain first. His projectiles are very annoying, they do high damage, and they're blinding. So once you take him out, things will get a lot easier. Well, I hope that wasn't all too long. I hope my experience can help you solo this successfully before time runs out in just a week or two. And uh, before I drag this on any longer, here's the full run, start to finish. Thanks for watching.
Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, and that is the end of the video. I hope it was helpful to you. If there is anything I missed, let me know. I'm sure there are some gaps that I missed. Again, there are lots of ways to do this mission. There are people way better at this game than me. But if you do end up trying it, or even trying it with my loadout, let me know how it goes down in the comments below. And thanks so much for stopping by. I really enjoyed making this video. It was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you guys did enjoy, feel free to subscribe, leave a like. I'm kind of hoping to put out some videos here in the near future. I've been pretty busy lately, but I did recently complete a flawless solo prophecy dungeon run, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for stopping by, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.